Hello! So, I am finally, somewhat reluctantly, making a video on how to pick up stitches for the thumb of a Salbe Mitten. So this pattern is by me, inspired by the Salbe Mitten tradition. And yeah, it's a very quick knit, using very big needles, and I'm just gonna jump straight into it, to be honest. So, the pattern will ask you to put stitches on some scrap yarn. Some patterns will just tell you to knit in the scrap yarn, but you will see now why I specifically tell you to put it on scrap yarn and cast on over instead of having this shut thing where you pull out the yarn and then have live stitches on either end. The reason being is if you have live stitches here, then your stitch will be like one leg black, one leg white, and it wouldn't connect. Obviously, there will be two different yarns and you're just going to have some pretty ugly colour work back here. It's just not going to work out, but it works really well for a single colour stocking net. But for colour work, I'm a believer in this method. So I'm just going to transfer these stitches now onto my needles. Now I'm using Magic Lube because that's what I prefer, but if you prefer double pointed needles, that's absolutely fine. That was what was traditionally used, so, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. Um... I should also disclose that the needles that I'm using I was actually given by Knit Pro to review eons ago. Um, I've not endorsed, it's just part of my needle stash. I was actually looking for my Chiragus, which I prefer using for this, but I couldn't find any. So <laughs> it's not much of an endorsement really, but full disclosure, they were given to me. So, got our stitches here. There should be nine stitches according to this pattern. Of course, I chose a black cable where you can't see anything. Uh, apologies for that. Three, six, and nine. Excellent. Now you can just pull out this yarn. Um, and so, you've got to rotate your work to be this way and get your needle out ready to pick up. So, we need both yarns, both colours, right away. So for this mitten, I'm using Vums, aka PT3 by Doma, that I bought for my own money, so there, ha. Huh. Got our two strands here, I'm just going to make sure they're like roughly the same length and just have them ready here. So we're going to need a chart, and this is my chart for these mittens that I'm actually sharing with you guys now, so yeah, whoa. And you basically need to focus on these first nine stitches here. They are the ones we're going to pick up right now. Now, the neat thing about the way I do my patterns is that I try to make sure the first row here matches the the backwards loop cast on that you did here. It's not going to match perfectly because the first stitch is actually black, but here I'm making sure the edge is entirely white. So we're going to pick up one white stitch from one black backward loop cast on stitch here. And just pull that needle through that little hole. And then pull a strand of white yarn through. Now we got the next are three white bumps, so we're going to do the remaining three through that. Getting it through. Wow, I can really see why people do tutorials with chunky yarn and needles. It is a lot easier. Oops, I spoke too soon. There we have it. So we've got the first four stitches of the chart. And now we're going to need the black yarn. So we've got that ready here. Just make sure we have a bit of a tail. And not that that's super important, but you know. And so we're going to poke our needle through that hole as well. Get that through so you can see how that looks. Pretty neat. So I'm going to get the white stitch up. White, the white yarn up, sorry. And pick up the last four stitches. That's through that bump, and that bump, and that. And then one last black one. Again, it was black in the column for the mitten, but here I've changed it all to being white so that you have this nice, nice column. So yeah, poke through and pick up. And there we have it. Doo -doo -doo. We've got three, we need one more. Yes, so we've got your, your stitches. Whoa, so we've got basically this whole setup here. You might want to show your ends inside the mitten just to get them out of the way. Now what? Well, this is the really annoying part. I'm not going to lie. This is the worst part. This is where you want to shut this hole. And it's not easy. And there aren't any perfect ways of doing it. And honestly, if you can't do it, weave in the ends later. Like literally take some ends, shut the hole and weave them in. 
that's completely fine. Um, I don't expect you guys to get this right. I don't always get it right, but we're going to try. So according to the pattern, we are going to pick up one stitch, the dark stitch here. You can see it's got this little pickup symbol and it's in the dark yarn. So obviously you don't have to use a dark yarn, just, you know, any contrast really. Oh, I don't like this part. So we're going to find some strands, there are some strands, and just see if we can knit them twisted. Like that. I should have used a needle, I just used my hands now. Maybe I should just do it with a needle. I don't know. So we put them up here. <laughs> and knit them twisted like that. That may have closed a hole. It may not have, so I'm going to do a bit of a cheeky one here. This doesn't actually say in the pattern, but... You know what? I've never been one for following the pattern, not even if it's my own. So let's get this needle on here. So if you aren't quite sure whether you have shut the hole or not, you can try to just pick up some more stitches. Um, the next stitch we're going to have here is white. So pick it up in white. Okay. Let's just do that. Um, let's knit this twisted. Okay, so you got this white stitch, but that was supposed to be knitted into this first stitch. So I'm just going to transfer that back on here and pull this one over so that it was knitted into that. Honest, it totally was. Yeah, so maybe this is a closed hole, maybe it isn't, but then we can just go back and change and seam that in later. It's no big deal at all. So now we're going to just alternate the stitches all the way till the end here. Alternate the colours, I mean. You are supposed to knit every stitch. So you work across here according to the chart. That wasn't worked properly. My goodness. So there we are. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sloppy work from my end. Um, so we got all but one stitch on the needles right now. Um, I'm going to pull up my needle magic loop here somewhere here. Pull up the cable, sorry. And now we just have one stitch left to pick up. So I'm going to do the same thing as previously. And again, if it doesn't go well, you actually already have, you know, the ends that we showed into the mitten here. You already have these that you can work with. Um, to close that hole later so I'm gonna do my best to try to pick up some some strands here and knit them twisted wow this is a very long cable so we've got that in here and we just shut it like that now I still think there's potential for a hole so we are now ready to actually start row two because we've got all the stitches that we need we have worked the first whole row of the chart that is one round of the thumb um so ready to start the next and i could actually start to pick up something in here as well and do the same thing that we did earlier just yeah a white stitch because that's what's coming up next whoa there we are that on here so that I can pull this one over so that it will be as though I knitted it and that may or may not have closed the hole if not we can always sew it shut later so now I'm just following row two this will be awfully loose because this is the loose yarn that we have on the inside here so you can you can always get them up here and just pull them like this so just don't work from them because they are your your tails and not your actual working yarn. And there we have row two of the back of the mitten, of the back of the thumb, I'm sorry. Well, it's the back of the mitten too. And we can just continue with the front of row two. I 
I'm obviously doing this continental style, as you can see. It's fine if you do it any other way. You can just let go of one colour and pick up the other. That's fine too. Whatever you are comfortable with. So, yeah, we work two rounds. It's basically how it goes. You'll find out later if the holes are shot or not. Sometimes they are, sometimes they aren't. It's looking pretty good, so I'm hopeful. And I'm just going to knit all the way to the thumb decreases. Now, one thing I wanted to show you, actually, while I still have your attention here, is this little trick of mine that I like to do uh, in order to avoid these jogs that we can often get when working Magic Loop. And they are even more prone to happen when you work stranded knitting Magic Loop. So, what I like to do is, you know, usually you will pull out the last needle you worked entirely. Well, I actually don't do that. I tend to kind of go, okay, we've got... Two black stitches and two white stitches here. I usually want to have three, but since this is chunky, this will have to do. And pull up the cable there. So these are the stitches that I have just worked. And so once I do this, they are already on my needles. They will not be pulled. There will not be any sort of snag here. There will not be a jog. And they obviously won't be here because this is already well tensioned. Um, so I can just start knitting here. Um, you might want to put in a marker here just to make sure that you know that this was the change from the front of the thumb to the back. But I personally, I can tell, so I don't tend to do that. But you do what you want. So I'm just going to follow row five of my chart here. And I will show you this one more time. Uh, I hate when this happens because now it's like we have a lot of stitches here and not that many black ones so I'm gonna actually do a bit of an exaggerated one and have all six stitches that's not ideal but you can always like adjust for that later so again got all these stitches on and put this needle back in here obviously this method works best if you're already very comfortable with magic loop uh, I wouldn't start off learning magic loop this way but if you are interested in learning a new way of doing things then for sure So once I have had those rounds where I've ended up taking over a lot of stitches, I tend to also compensate for that next time by doing the same amount, roughly. It's not exactly the same, but it sort of evens out as you go. So. <laughs> so here, I can tell that I'm at the column at the side of the thumb, and I'm starting a new row of the chart, a new row of the chart, new round of the thumb. So that's row six of the chart. So it's actually quite easy when you have a column like that that will just show you where you're at in your work. So yeah, fun little trick there. Okay, so we have now made it to where we need to start decreasing for the thumb. I have now just adjusted my stitches so that we can just more easily see where we are. Because that's obviously, they're going to be all over the place when you do that method that I just showed you. So, just going to make sure that we are ready set up with the magic loop. Uh-huh. And so, what does the pattern tell us? Well, it tells us to do a SSK. So, do this one. Pull it out and knit the next. You can slip both. I mean, you can do this too. That works as well. Um, and do that. Now, some people... Uh, wonder if they've been doing it right because they can see the black stitch poking through here that's just the feature of ssk it sort of helps to pull the black stitch a bit to make it sort of recede um you may have to just play around with that a bit later once you've finished the thumb to be honest it's just the nature of ssk and the way that you pull the stitches around oops the next one's supposed to be black oh dear. so just following the chart until there's the next one coming up here. Ah, there we are. So again, this one's this is pretty simple. It's a reverse. You knit two together. Knit two together doesn't pull stitches the same way, so you tend not to get the black stitch kind of coming through in the same way that it can do with the SSK. As you can see here, it's getting quite pronounced. So that may need fixing later. It's fine. You're doing it right. So there we have it. Let's do the same thing on the front.
Oops, forgot that I am doing SSK. I like to do my SSKs like this. I pull one stitch over later. Um, I feel like that reduces the chance of the behind stitch kind of poking out, but I might just be imagining that. Um, hmm. Oh, yeah. And knit two together. Oops, this is a tight one. And we have finished the decrease round. So we're going to do that two more times. I can actually do them on the camera. It's not going to take very long. So we do another SSK. And another knit two together. Another SSK that I nearly dropped. Don't do what I do. Do as I say. <laughs> and and another knit two together. And now we're at the last decrease round. I'm going to show you that as well. It gets really tight doing this magic loop. That's why I like to do that method I just showed you. It just gets a bit complicated when demonstrating decreases. So I'm leaving it out for now. SSK and knit one and knit two together and knit one. Ta -da! We do the same for the front. I am such a tight knitter. Don't be like me. Goodness me. This is why I use six millimeters, while the rest of you are probably using fives. Mm. Oops. And the last decrease is happening now. Just make sure I knit the white yarn and not the black. And now we knit the black. Ta da! And now we are ready to cut the yarn. Oh, and just pull that through the stitches. So I'm pulling that yarn through this darning needle and we kind of have to see if we can force these stitches on again, which is getting tighter and tighter every time. Oh dear. And pull that through. Do the same thing here. like that cool and I try to find a sneaky way to <laughs> get that through in here so I can feel my my thumb here is not getting disrupted by any other strands or anything so I'm just gonna follow this down follow my thumb as it goes down and pull that through so I should be able to find that strand on the inside here and just give it a tug don't want to pull too hard in case you're working with a somewhat fragile yarn and yeah you want to <laughs> obviously weave in all the ends now which is not my favorite thing but that's essentially how you do it so you can see why i prefer to pick up stitches from a backward loop cast on because it gets a lot less messy and more continuous here than had you been doing uh, loose and live stitches here, it would have been a lot more chaotic. And I learned that the hard way, so you don't have to. So there, it's had been it and thumb and everything. And now I have to do important work.